We're killing them. We are killing them. And yeah. It's wholesale slaughter. It happens every day in every city uh, uh, around this whole country. You need to throw it in their face. You need to be out there just saying, look, we have killed this many animals this month. What are you going to do about it? I know people who when I was doing this, used to call me Dr. Death. Mm -hmm. I would love, I would have loved not to have had a job as a euthanasia technician. Let, let me tell you, it would have been great. It, you know, now that... Who I'm else not, would do it, though? Yeah. And you did it kindly, so look at it that way, okay? I mean, uh, we didn't cause the problem. We didn't breed all of these animals. No, the people that bred them and the people that dumped them off were the ones that, 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 that murdered these animals. I just, right. I just, I just pushed the button. When we euthanized, we would, uh, well, we'd do both dogs and cats the same day, and this was at the old city of Las Vegas shelter. We used to give them each an intravenous overdose of an anesthetic, and some of the puppies come back, you know, wagging their tail and, and all happy and, and, and kissing on you, and then, you know, here you are, you're killing them, you know, and, and try to pretend, you know, that I wasn't, that I wasn't doing anything, we would talk about all this, and we would joke about this or that or the other, um, just to, to, you know, to, to try to pretend like this was not happening. And it was just survival, just absolute survival. You, you know, you put a gun in your mouth and shoot yourself. You practically wanted to do that on a daily basis. It's hard um, because you're dealing with You know, they're, in a way, they're spirits. I mean, uh, you know, they they kind of linger. I've, I've had dreams before. I, I don't really, I don't, I don't drink because I have a feeling if I did drink, I would have lost myself quite a bit in drinking while I was euthanizing. Sometimes I was the one who drew up the euthanasia list. So I would have to walk up and down every row, check everyone's paperwork, and I would have to look at them and say, I don't think you can get adopted. Yeah. I don't think you're going to make it. So I'm going to have to put you on the list. And I think that drawing up the list was probably a little bit harder than euthanasia because it's your God. You, you are making right. that choice of who gets euthanized. And um, there's an old Johnny Cash song, and um, he says, in the song, he says, um, there's a man coming around taking names, and he decides who to free and who to blame. And you all won't be treated the same when the man comes around. But when you had a room full of 192 dogs, that were happy and jumping around, you knew that there were some that you had to put on that list because their time was up. You're, you're committing murder. You're, you're killing things. That emotional drain that you feel every time you pull up the, that blue liquid and put it in a vial and know that you're going to stick it in um, a cat's heart so that they just die instantaneously. And I don't know about you, but the ones that would get me were they would be purring. Mm -hmm. Yep. They just, Making muffins, yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, they the, just purr and purr yeah, and mm -hmm. purr like you are just the best yeah. thing. And then you kill them. And yeah. then you kill them. Mm -hmm. After you've euthanized these 60 or 70 animals in one day, they're spread out mm -hmm. on the floor in front of the crematory. And I used to walk out and I used to think, oh, my God, it's a holocaust. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And they would put the cremator up, and you'd see the burned bodies, yeah. and you'd be throwing more in, and then you'd have to scrape the ashes out when they were dead, and or when they finished burning, you'd scrape the ashes out, and then just dump them out in the trash. And the whole process is is 
is horrendous. Fix your animals. Yeah. Fix your animals. And the smell, you know, the smells, for some reason, I could just smell it. You could smell the fear, the death, you know. Uh, it, you know, it was just a horrible thing to have to do, but it's reality, and it's very sad. All they know is the last thing that they remember, if it's not a fractious dog, the last thing that they remember is they have somebody holding them. They have somebody whose arms are wrapped around them, and then they have a euthanasia technician holding their hands and talking to them and telling them that it's okay. And I used to tell them that I'll see them on the other side and that their pain was all over. it's injected in their vein you can smell it and you they take a big deep sigh and then you could smell the it's kind of a sicky sweet smell then we lay them down on the floor and they're gone and they're gone Thank you. 